What's up guys, we're here, welcome back to the channel. So today we are gonna be diving into the developer campfire chat that was at BlizzCon today. They unraveled a lot of information and I got some notes here just to make sure that I don't miss anything. And there's a lot of stuff that I really, really, really enjoyed from the campfire chat that they did. Very happy about uh, some of the stuff that they said. A few things that kind of disappointed me, kind of left me out. You know, I was, you know, I was hoping they would just go into it more. I'm um, like the expansion, but all in all, I really enjoyed it. And I'm very, very optimistic about the future of Diablo 4. So let's just kind of go over the notes here. I was going to kind of play some footage, but all the notes are here. So let's just kind of go over this. So the biggest thing is the new expansion for the Vessel of Hatred. And a link to this will be down in the description below, guys. So uh, they kind of just were very vague about the stuff for the expansion with the Vessel of Hatred. What we do know is that it's on... Um, a familiar place from Diablo 2 and then it should have been changed and we're going to be having Prime Evil Mephisto back inside of Sanctuary to kind of just toss up some duels with him and fight him out so that's pretty much all we know they didn't really go into it they were very vague and just kind of left things out so it was kind of disappointing in that sense I hope that I was hoping that they would give a you know highlight a little bit more but that's okay i'm sure you know it doesn't come out for another year guys you know the end of 2024 so for now i guess this is okay that we even got this now let's get into the some of the best things that are coming to to the game after uh <clears throat> the developer chat so that is the season of blood the unique malignant rings these start next week guys so next week on november 7th you're going to be or in a couple days you're going to be able to farm these okay so there's a bunch of different rings there's going to be one for each class okay each of these rings are going to be unique rings and they cannot be changed. You got one for the rogue, one for the um, sorcerer, then you got barb, uh, druid, and necro. So honestly, like the Talrasha one is absolutely insane. I think the rogue got shafted here because the ring of the red, the uh, one for the druid as well as the sacrilegious ring for necro are all insane this is the one where you pull you got the corpse that cast all of the corpse uh skills automatically and then this one right here after spending 100 fury your next cast of hammer of the ancients upheaval or death blow is a guaranteed critical strike and deals increased bonus crit strike damage this is going to make hoda even more insane and it's already insane so these rings are absolutely fantastic, guys. I'm very, very happy that these rings are here. Um, the most important one is the sacrilegious ring for the necromancer. This ring is very important because it just felt like besides bone spear and maybe playing like a full summoner build where like your skills are only benefiting the minions, which that's a whole separate conversation. I still think it lacks incredibly in diablo 4 the minions and in, in the ai and stuff but that's that's another video but the fact that you have to do all these things while trying to cast all your corpse skills and just take up that time it just felt very clunky not smooth during season one the ring or the sacrilegious malignant heart was huge it made a lot of builds very very smooth it opened up more builds like sever it opened up builds like blight it opened up a lot of these things that just made the build feel very very natural very very um easy not not easy to play but but flowed very easy so very happy about those rings now how do you get these rings these rings are going to come i don't know if they say here but they said in the uh dev stream or in the dev chat that you will be able to get these rings it makes sense from farming varshan so in world tier 4 world tier 3 you're going to be able to farm varshan and get these items i don't know if they said world tier 3 so don't quote me on that but guaranteed in world tier 4 you're going to be able to farm varshan for these rings so right now i would tell you just to save up all of your resources to farm varshan and then you can get these juicy juicy drops uh next coming in is the season of blood community feedback about the occultist i don't think they really highlighted in here at all but basically what they did was is that now you're going to be able to see the change or see your change let's see if i can find it in here uh you're going to be able to see the changes coming to your character so like when you are enchanting your items you're going to be able to see those changes coming right here so now you're going to be able to view possible affixes and you can kind of see what the difference is that hey when i'm trying to re-roll this this is the list of things that i can try to get so that way you can try to 
maximize your rolls and not waste all your money and resources re-rolling re-rolling hoping to get the one that you're looking for at least this way now you can get a good look this is something that they did in diablo 3 which everybody loved you kind of just click like oh crap i can't get you know uh max damage resistance or like all resist or something like that i just swap it and go you know get to another gear piece so this is huge i really love that they add this in we really needed this at launch but i will take it for now it's absolutely fantastic so next is the um the seasonal midwinter blight which is actually really really cool uh this is actually something that's just gonna going on for the middle of the season um it's a seasonal event where it, basically in fractured peaks there's going to be all of this frozen christmasy themed monsters and there's there's going to be one big boss i don't think they show it here there's one big boss that you're going to be able to fight um throughout all of these challenges that you can do for the uh, midwinter blight uh season or event you get to fight the red cloaked horror which is the boss and then you can basically it's just something to add to it there's no like particular rewards it's just uh cosmetics which are really cool it's like only cosmetics that you're actually going to be getting um which isn't isn't necessarily a bad thing like here goes the guy you're going to be able to fight this dude and you can get these cool little cosmetic rewards here which are kind of cool it's just something extra to add to the to the season which i think is is very very nice now the biggest thing coming guys is the uh where is it the arbiter the arbiter is it arbiter yeah arbiter of zir okay so i gotta highlight this this is something absolutely insane so we are gonna have a new end game boss okay it's a pinnacle boss it's gonna be the arbiter of zir okay and this is going to be a boss where you can continuously fight him over and over and over again. Okay, he's going to be much harder than Uber Lilith or maybe on par as you continue to increase. And what they gave us was obviously this is in development, it's not final, but this is kind of the path of what's going to happen to be able to unlock to fight him. So you're going to have to complete the entire seasonal journey first within the season. So I definitely suggest doing that. And then you're going to get recipes to go through these steps all here to get the glyphs to be able to fight him so it's essentially once you get the glyphs and once you get the sigils to be able to go fight uh this new zir it's going to kind of act like the uh beast in the ice where you create a nightmare dungeon right you go through the dungeon and then you're going to fight zir at least that's what it, it seems to be when you're crafting and using a blood forge sigil and each time you continue to do these upgrades, it makes Zir harder, harder, and harder, which is actually very, very cool to test your builds, test, you know, complete end game and just having something extra to do. Now, because it's an, an actual nightmare dungeon, you're still gonna be able to get loot and you're still gonna be able to get your sigil, um, e or excuse me, your glyph EXP at the end of each run, which I think is very, very important. So it's not just a wasted run and it's just like, I'm just fighting this boss and I get nothing else. So that's really, really cool. I love that part. Um, I don't think they have it on here. They didn't show it, but there's a glyph that you're going to be getting. Let's see if I can find it here for you guys. There's a glyph that's going to be coming to the game that you need to, or not need, but it's going to help you fight this brand new Zer, and that is the Tears of the Blood. Okay, this is a unique glyph just to this season. Now, something that they mentioned with this, this new Pinnacle boss is, is that this whole process is the season only and it's going to be something to test community feedback to see if how we like it what changes can be made etc because they want to add something like this permanently to the game so i definitely suggest that if you are a high level player or a grinder and you really want to test some builds go do this so that way we can give some really good feedback so that way we can get some more end game content now the tears of blood is a unique glyph that's going to help us fight that abitur of Zer. So as you can see, this thing is absolutely nuts. For every five core stats purchased within range, you gain 2% increased damage. Joe did say that when you max this out, you can get up to 200% increased total damage, which is gonna make fighting the Abadur Azura as you continue to go up, very, very satisfying and very fun. So I don't know if, there's gonna, if they're gonna keep something like this in the game permanently afterwards or whatnot, but they may scale it differently. So until then, I think it's very, very cool. Uh, next on here, is let's see we got the gauntlet the weekly leaderboards for the gauntlet okay the weekly leaderboards for the gauntlet uh this is something i don't know if you guys are big fans of doing the gauntlet i just want to find the gauntlet section here if they do show it 
but the gauntlet is going to be a weekly basically a weekly challenge it's almost like a weekly challenge rift which is going to be something that we're going to be able to do for our characters right so each week there's going to be this map it's going to be the same exact map it's going to be the same exact layout all the monsters are going to be in the same exact place as you continue to go through the dungeon and rank up your score there's going to be multiple different uh, ranks that you can get being worthy being the highest and then your rank score uh, which is going to be placing you in your leaderboard rank at the end of each week all of the players that have the highest ranks are going to be immortalized at least on a on a leaderboard and you'll be able to see some of these things just kind of change you can see the this the leaderboard here and you can see the people that are at the highest the top 10. it's cool they have them by class they have them by if you're in a duo a trio or a full group all platforms non-hardcore global etc you can filter this through absolutely everything so and then at the end of that week You'll have your ranks and then the start of the next week, it'll be a brand new dungeon with brand new ranks all over again. So something you could do week in and week out to test your builds and characters. If you wanna do a you know, week to week challenge grind, which is really cool. As you guys can see here, the seals and frames for the trials. So as you're continuing to, to do these weekly challenges, you get placed, right? And as you go up, you get the ranks. So it's not placed, blooded, steadfast, iron world, and worthy. Once you get to worthy, that's at the highest. Now you do not have to be level 100 to compete in these. You could be lower, obviously, but higher level, it's gonna be you know better for your rank. But this is something that you can do week in and week out. I think this is cool. We're finally getting this. However, this doesn't come until season three. So if you guys were hoping that this comes in the, in the update next week, then that sucks. But we get we we get it in season three, which is pretty pretty cool. I'm kind of excited for leaderboards. Um, and that is all the big news, guys. That is all the big news. But there is a few other things that I want to kind of bring in here and just showcase to you guys while I have this playing in the background. So there is a few things let me just briefly look at my notes so that way you guys can know because there's some things that they said during the campfire chat which is insane and something that i really really love so the two biggest things that are going to be changes that are coming is the changes to the living steel in the hell tides this was a question that was asked during the q a uh at the end game right here, you guys can see that the, the Living Steel Q&A question is here. Do you intend to add more sources of Living Steel? So what this kind of came down to was that they said that they were very stingy with Living Steel and they are looking at doing some changes and or a buff to this to allow us to be able to get more Living Steel to kind of help with those Durial runs. They did not elaborate on when that was going to come as well as what the changes possibly could be. They didn't say that at all. All they said was that they are looking at doing a change to this. So that is good news in the long term. So I'm very excited about that because as we all know, especially from my video that we made about Living Steel, how the struggle is for this to do Duriel fights. Now, the next big thing, big thing that they they talked about, which is actually really cool in itemization is all the changes that are coming to itemization that they're talking about is making it easier for us to be able to use itemization in the game okay there's a lot of times where it's very very hard to gear and use itemization especially in your stash so there's two big things coming the biggest thing is that all of our uh legendary aspects that we would put are going to be put into the codex this is absolutely insane so that way we, we, you know, we free up all that space. They did not elaborate on how it's going to work, whether it's like one big codex stash space, or if it's, you know, if I have, you know, five retributions, I just click on the retribution and it shows all of them that I have. They did not say, but we are getting that move. That is a guarantee that is coming. The second biggest thing, which they highlighted at for the end game and itemization is crafting. They mentioned crafting. Joe mentions crafting in here, and it's super crazy that they're finally going to bring crafting to the end game on top of the occultist change. So not only are we going to be able to see new affixes that we can put, eventually we're going to be able to craft things and make itemization even better, especially in the end game, which is huge when you compare it to a game like Path of Exile. So I'm very, very excited about that. That was probably the biggest takeaway I had for this dev uh, campfire stream. So yeah guys that is all the information i kind of wanted to bring it to you keep it short and sweet so like the video i want you guys to comment down below let me know what you guys think about all this stuff that's coming to the game and what are your thoughts and of course subscribe and as always stay gaming i'll see you guys in the next one peace